What's up, everybody? We are back with another episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. My name is Ethan Shalloway, joined with by Chris Salona, and this is episode 137. Energy levels are high. I'm doing pretty well. Chris, how are you doing? Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's why. I, that's why I asked. Exactly. That's why you asked. Uh, no, I'm okay. Um, I'm I'm just a little tired. Um, but you know what? There's not really anything that we can do about that. So we're going to have a nice little quality podcasting session here for episode 137, the first of the month of November, coming to you on November 6th, 2023. So you said your energy levels are good. Uh, can, let's let's get some elaboration on that. How, how are we feeling today? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, we are recording this Monday, the same day as um, 136 was released. So if you remember last last week we recorded on Saturday, so this is two days after. So it's a quick turnaround because later in this week you're coming to Birmingham. Uh, we're going to see the front bottoms on Thursday, and then we're going to drive to uh, a college friend's wedding in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, you know that's exciting. You're going to get here Wednesday, so I mean we have two days until you're here. Yeah, it'll and, be here uh, before we know it. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of good stuff on on deck and we're going to have a really good time. So like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in good spirits. I mean, it feels like it's, it's going to be a busy week at the end. Like we're, we had a lot going on right. uh, later and I always feel like I need to be more productive than, and then a week like this kind of steps in. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, who cares, I guess. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to do and, it anyway. Exactly. Just as we're doing the, the show today anyway, because this is really our only opportunity to do it. And it's funny that the few people that I, that I know in, in my day-to-day life who know that we do the podcast um they're like oh you're going to visit ethan like you guys are going to record like together probably for the podcast right and i was like no no absolutely not we're not doing that because i know ethan if we were to have waited uh we would not have had the time uh and we would have ended up having to like stay up like super late and just do like a really really horrible podcast so it's good this feels safe this is comfortable and that's what we need sometimes this this is exactly that this is safe yeah. This is, um, we can count on it. Um, mm-hmm. we're, we're on normal settings. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll pull off something when you're here, but like, uh, yeah, this just makes a lot more sense as is. So, yeah. And we got big news coming out over the weekend that we're going to get into and talk about a little bit. Creed has a tour of about 40 cities on Creed's deck back. for the summer. Creed is back. And um, that's an emergency pod worthy topic. So, we're going to talk about that. And a few other music things, but it's gonna be short and sweet today because, um, you know, it's November and that's, that's when you do short and sweet pods. Well, that's the thing, no, November, December, like you don't get any work done. Like this is the prime time of, you know, you, you take oh, a Friday, yeah. you take a Friday off ahead of the weekend, or you maybe come in late on Monday. And, uh, you know, with this being the first episode of November, we're hopping right on that train and, uh, you know, we're just going to clock in, do the bare minimum, uh, complain a little bit while we do <laughs> it and then clock right back out. So, uh, we're able to do that and we have the Liberty, uh, to pretty much do whatever we want on this podcast because people keep coming back and listening to us do whatever it is that we want. Um, And not only do they keep coming back, but they keep supporting us in a variety of different ways. Uh, So I would like to thank anybody that has uh, left us a review on any of the podcast websites, streaming sites that you might use, Um, anybody who has shared the show with a friend, anyone who has left a comment, uh, emailed us with a fun story or a suggestion, anyone who has purchased merch, and anyone who has become a supporter on Patreon on and you know each and every week we mention the uh, the patreon spiel and uh, who knows maybe today could be the day that you out there might be feeling inspired uh you know to kind of uh, mm-hmm. take that take that step and support us um you know as we move uh you know clo- we're closing up the year pretty soon so it'd be nice to add a couple of more supporters into this club uh as we prepare for 2024 yeah man the year is coming to a close it's really mind-blowing um, at this moment right now, we have 52 members um, that support us each week uh, on the Patreon. So yeah, if we can get, you know, break 60, I think that'd be a good, obviously a good goal. It's eight, eight new members. Absolutely. Um, I say we have a two, a five and a $10 um, tiers, three, three different tiers. So uh, please consider. And 
maybe, well, maybe we will. We'll say, There's a certainty oops, that we sorry. will. Maybe we'll uh, say your name next us. time. Uh, and as we do every week, we say the names of the top tier supporters um, over there on Patreon. So $10 a month, they help make this show possible. And I would like to thank Carlene Salona, Alexa Shannon, Jade Mercado, The Blue Owl, Fuck Soup, Jamie Lynn, Laura Nyreen, Rachel Corning, Millie, Doug Endy, What the Fuck is Up, Denny's, Black Hole Sean, Nikki Six, Kara K, Chris LSMS, Alex Long, Seattle Four Fanboy from New Jersey, Eddie Vetter Got Me Through My Second Divorce, Faith Bittner, Lameller Bone, Mike McCready's Mustache, Epona, Granny Grunge, Corden Stewart, Keith White, Sherry Matthews, D Boat, Gochu John, Eric R. Berry, and Pile of Punk. Uh, so thank you once again for giving us the liberty and the latitude to completely and totally mail in a podcast episode as we're going to do today. Yeah, potentially. Hopefully. <clears throat> um, yeah, hopefully we have the grace from all the listeners. I hate I hate kind of talking about it too much that like what we're what we're doing and stuff because I feel like yeah maybe we don't need to. But it's okay. It I think you probably so, tell it anyway. You yeah. know. Yeah, and like we said before, I feel like I feel like we've had some really good ones, some 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 oddities and some cool episodes recently uh, for what they were and how they came about. So there's some good stuff that maybe go back and listen to if you're not completely caught up. Um, listening to the grunge yeah, bible the, podcast the callbacks are great exactly listening to the podcast and creating the podcast can be adequately summed up using the uh pearl jam lyric from the song porch hear my name take a good look this could be the day like it's all there's always the chance the chance is always there for greatness to strike yeah. and greatness to arrive and um you know that's why you got to tune in every week that's why you gotta you gotta be present yeah so we, we didn't bring this up uh, maybe the last two weeks but i, I kind of want to kind of want to say it today um grunge bible is trying to sell your house <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely it, it's time um so we work closely with one of the best real estate agents in the country my brother quinn shalloway and uh he's awesome and he buys and sells homes for people and if you're out there and you're looking to buy or sell uh we can get you in contact with him and then he will if you're in the you know philadelphia area um he'll be hand, uh, boots on the ground but if not who gets you in contact with somebody that can. And then, you know, through that connection, you know, everybody's going to make money. You're going to make money selling your house. Quinn will make money. He's going to pay us, yada, yada. We're going to get it done. And then I feel like, you know, Grunge Bible will have a uh, a small piece of that house. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll send you something if you buy the house, you know, buy a house. We'll send you like a, a, a beanie or something. A, mer a merch <laughs> prize pack or, or something, you know, to warm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This will be our contribution to the house warming or the, the like, so the there's, wall. there's obviously there's house warming events, but if, if you sell no. your house, is there like, what's the opposite of a house, like a house, like a house farewell? Like, would you have a, would you have a party be like, Hey, like this is it with the house. Yeah. I mean, I would kind of do if you that. Your, sounds kind of fun. I mean, if you sell, if you sell your house, you're probably buying another house. So that's true. Um, so we could warm the other house. Yeah, yeah. So I think that it just kind of carries over into yeah. the next house. Yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, we want to I mean, we want to play a part in that. Uh, so Quinn Shalloway is the man for that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. So we got Creed. We got Creed on the deck here. I we think we just get Creed right into deck. it. Should we get into Creed or should we do the uh, this day in music history? Oh yeah, I totally, I totally, totally messed up uh, about to skip over that. So yes, we do have this day in music. So it's November sixth. And uh, I was, we were looking at the, the radar for some stuff. And I guess, you know, me and Chris have been talking about it recently. I think we have to be, we have to talk about uh, November 1st, there was a birthday for an Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I just wanted to bring that up that we're not, I don't want to miss that completely, but no, we uh, can't. what a care, what a character that guy was, <laughs> what a, you know, what a and that guy is. Yeah, what a what an yeah, absolute dude, lineup. I have to I have to ask Ethan, what do you think about uh mustachioed Anthony Kiedis? He's been rocking the mustache as of late. I mean, it's his thing. Uh I mean he's kind of always had a mustache, hasn't he? Had I don't know. I mean, I'm not a Chili Peppers fan really, so I I would be the wrong yeah. uh, authority to uh to speak on that from the pulpit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I did I I mean I love it. When I support I think, everybody's I mean, a good, sovereign a good, right to grow a to grow a good or a bad mustache yeah yeah i'll give him i'll give him the uh i'll give him the pass i guess i think it's i think it's needed he needs the mustache at this point in his career right oh yeah 
Absolutely. Like everybody, mm -hmm. like he, he, it's definitely not the worst mustache in music. I mean, Mike McCready's mustache, not, not the Patreon supporter, but the actual physical mustache that Mike McCready had was pretty bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I always mention his mustache. I got like a, really like a mustache fetish for Mike McCready or something going on over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've oh. been rocking your mustache for a long time now. I've had it All since summer? April. Yeah. It was originally going to be a summer thing. Um, as I did last summer and the summer before I, you grow the mustache in the summer. Cause it's good. You know, you get a little silly in the summer, you know, and a little, you know, a little off the wall here and there maybe. And uh, a little dirty. I, yeah. A little dirty, but like now I got the dirty mustache going, I'm going for the dirty hair again. Like it's almost long enough to be like pretty dirty again. Um, so I'm looking yeah. forward to that. And I think those two are going to pair well together. Um, so I would like to keep it going for a little longer. Yeah, no, no sign of quits anytime soon. No, I, I feel okay with it. You know, um, the thing is, like, um, the first time I grew out my hair, uh, I didn't take care of it in a, in a very proper way. Like, I didn't use great conditioner. Like, I probably washed it too much. Um, but now, I mean, you, I, you know, you don't have to really wash this thing as as often as I did in the past. So, I'm trying to take better care of it. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Solid. Enough. Enough mustache talk. Yeah. Um, so we'll we've, start the, the oldest field. thing that I picked out. The oldest thing that I picked out on the history uh, timeline was 1970, November 6th. Aerosmith played their first ever show in high school at the Nipmuc, I believe is how you say it, Nipmuc Regional Nipmuc High Regional School. High. In, Menden, Massachusetts, in, baby. In, in Massachusetts. And I, I didn't know that. So that's really, that's kind of cool that you can, um, that they were a high school band, you know, that, that, that played obviously became one of the best-selling American rock bands of all time. And, uh, I mean, yeah, they talk about like high school friends, you know, playing together, mm -hmm. um, back in the day, unless maybe they were just playing a high school show after they were outside of high school, but I don't know. But yeah. Um, what do you think of Aerosmith, Chris? Um, there's obviously no debating their significance in, in rock music history. Um, I've never, I've never sought Aerosmith's music out, you know, um, yeah. listening to the radio you hear it all the time you hear it at sporting events you hear it you know soundtracks um you know i think back to the dazed and confused movie sweet emotion is kind of like the uh the, the opening song for that they kind of like zoom down into the movie uh which is really really great i mean so, some of the songs are good uh or i enjoy some of them a lot of them i, I don't like i'm not a big steven tyler guy um mm -hmm. but it's just not really an area that kind of fires me up but obviously aerosmith uh you know are very significant and i think they're in the middle of, or maybe they had to postpone for a bit, like a farewell tour that they were doing. Cause evidently like now for real, this is it. Um, but who's, who's to mm -hmm. say, but 1970 to 2023, 2024, that's a hell of a run. And something that always fascinates years, me. Yeah. yeah. In the last like five or six or seven weeks that we've been doing this day in music history, I feel like every single, every single time there's like the anniversary of somebody's first show. And I really appreciate that there's historical record of that. It's like, that was the first time right. that that band took the stage together. I think we had Rage Against the Machines first show a couple of weeks ago. Um, Pearl Jam's first show took place, uh, I think it was like October 22nd. So we just celebrated the 33rd anniversary of that. Um, so it's, it's really cool that we have the, these historical records because you just think back and it's like, you know, I'm always, I always think of the, the thought like, did anybody in the room know what was to come or the greatness, you know, yeah, because how sometimes, long it, sometimes be it develops over time. And sometimes I really do think that you can see it right then and there. Um, and to be able to somehow have any firsthand accounts of that, you know, if somebody you know, who was, who was there that day, um, is really, really fascinating. There's a few articles about like Nirvana's first show, for example, and obviously Pearl Gems is fairly well documented. And it's like, you know, if you, if you knew then what you know now. Yeah. So if we fast forward to 1975, we've got another the first Sex show. Pistols, yep, the Sex Pistols played their first ever show opening for Bazooka Joe at St. Martin's School of Art in London. And I, I put this down because there's an interesting fact uh, that follows. So Bazooka Joe's lead singer, Stuart Goddard, who is inspired by the set, uh, dropped out of art school and changed his name to Adam Ant. <laughs> and because of, because of the Sex Pistols, like, opening act and i just find that so ridiculous that like he saw this and was like i need to change i need to drop out and change my name these guys are like oh, these guys are so good that i'm going to change my name like how does that how does that like, make sense Chris? i don't know like 
that is like, like a, what would what would make what would make you change your name? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is like the equivalent of the opening of Wolf of Wall Street when uh, Jonah Hill's character is like, "If you show me a pay stub for forty thousand dollars, I'll quit my job today and come work for you." Um, you know, I appreciate. I mean, these these you know, you're getting some skin in the game that way. Um, but the changing of the name part is, um, I understand maybe being inspired by something to like drop out of school drop or out. change your profession or something. If you're if something is that captivating to you, but I struggle to understand <laughs> where the name change fits into all of this. Like, like on the to-do I know, list, and they like, open for him, right? <laughs> That's it's unbelievable. Oh. Like I, I love that though. I mean, I that's something that I I, I don't have the testicular fortitude to do. Um, I also I, I like my name. Like I I don't like the name Adam Ant. You know that wouldn't be for me. But I mean, it it was it was for Stuart Goddard. So cheers to him. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I, it's I just pretty ridiculous. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, the Sex Pistols. Uh, you know, I've listened to them here and there. And uh, but man, I, I think I have to go find some footage of this show if I can. The first ever because. Uh, it cool. seems pretty, you know, pretty noteworthy. Yeah. Obviously, we we've mentioned the Sex Pistols a few times on this show, and and it's always been like a band that's on my to do list, um, and I, I've never quite gotten there. But who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll I might I might be drawn to Bazooka Joe now now that I know this story, and I'll just kind of bypass the Sex Pistols and get right into the the Adam Ant zone. Yeah, the punk the punk scene is is a hard one to like. I, I mean, that's a very like time and place yes. setting that is hard to retroactively get into. Like I think about like, you know, I mean, Sex Pistols, Ramones, Black Flag, like mm -hmm. these type of bands that were so big and had the cult following, they're kind of hard to retroactively go back into. Cause that scene, you know, that, that type of what fueled their music is so different now. I mean, people, people follow other bands, you know, it's just a whole different scene. So it's hard to really, I feel like feel the power of the music without yeah. the scene being tied tied in and we don't have that right now so like it's tough for punk to like live yeah and, and and it's different i mean i think that that musical movement because i don't it's not it's more than a genre right it's a movement and i think it was so tied into the social issues of the day and just like the plight yeah. of of a lot of the people who wanted to create this music i mean like ta that's probably one of the bigger instances of like a bunch of people who had common feelings about their position and the inequality or, or what have you that might be going on in their lives that, you know, they, they literally carved out a space for themselves where, you know, they, they were amongst people who, who had the same thought process and the same kind of ideals. And, and I think that's really, really cool. Um, and it's something that, uh, certainly if you were there, I, I can totally see how it would, um, you know, it would really kind of, you know, tie you in and, and bring you in and, and perhaps, for, you know, move you to change your name and drop out of school. Um, yeah, punk punk is something that is, is it's going to be challenging for me to get into. Like, I've I've just now recently, like, really gotten into pop punk. So now I just have to, like, you know, reel it in a little bit more and get back to the uh, the origins of yeah. punk. Uh, but that's going to be that's going to be a tough ask. But anything is possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, anything is possible. Exactly. Maybe some old old shows on YouTube will do it, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, on this day in music history, November 6th, we are absolutely hammering the 70s, uh, and we're going to jump forward mm -hmm. to 1976. And uh, Ethan, I, I would love to for you to elaborate if this has any significance for you. But uh, on this day in 1976, Blue Oyster Cult, their biggest hit, Don't Fear the Reaper, peaked at number 12 on the charts in the United States. Um, and this one is, I, I hate this song. Oh, really? I don't like it. Okay. Why? I just don't. Because I don't. it, but, yeah, I mean, fair enough. I mean, you don't have to like everything. Uh, this song, I mean, I'm not a huge cult fan when it comes to Blue Oyster. Yeah. The Blue Oyster, uh, varieties of cults. <laughs> um, but like, uh. I do. I mean, I like this song. Obviously, yeah, I love the cowbell in it, and uh, you know, people. I mean, people definitely like it. I know my coach really likes the Blue Oyster Cult, and they just had a really good, uh, I don't know, set list songs. And I'm like, chalking you know, this one like up to very... another instance of you had to be there, and I wasn't there. Yeah, and um, I also wrote down that the the song, you know, the band said it's not about suicide, but about reuniting with loved ones in the afterlife don't fear the reaper. And I kind of like, I kind of like thinking about that song in a, in that sense that kind of like helped me. I think that helps me understand it a little bit more and think of it. Um, you know, it's a good theme. It's a good theme to, 
to write a song about, like, you know, to not fear death, but reuniting with it. So I don't know. It may, there might be something there in the lyrics that, that we've missed over the years. That I'm going to need to spend some time with this one because this is the first time I've considered anything about this song as it relates to the message of it or the lyrics. I, I couldn't yeah. even really tell you what any of the lyrics are at this point, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to assign myself some homework for that one. Yeah. I mean, and, it's, uh, it's, a, I mean, it's a little, it's a little corny, but also has some great solos in it. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a product of its time for sure. I mean, it fits in perfectly with the fabric of music in the seventies uh, and another individual who fits perfectly and is kind of, you know, an all timer. I think every Everybody appreciates the music that this person made. Uh, Ethan, I love this one. Next up in 1979 on, uh, not October, excuse me, November the 6th, um, Paul Simon kicked off uh, his, at the time, latest tour at London's Hammersmith Odeon, and he offered to buy everyone in the audience a drink, and the tab came out to about $2,000, and um, I mean, that's that's a very generous offer, buy everybody a drink yeah, at the venue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's just one of those things that is uh, kind of unique and special. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, like, who would do that nowadays? Like, who would be like, you know what, guys? Like, let's get this party started. Like, tabs on me. Like, go get, go get yourself a, a drink. Well, and the thing and, is, like, too, to, to, to bring it to the present day. So $2,000 in 1979 uh, is just about $9,000 uh, in today's currency adjusted uh, for inflation. And that's a pretty that's a pretty hefty sum. But, I mean, you figure... Paul Simon, after making a killing with Simon and Garfunkel and dragging Art Garfunkel to the top, because we all know it was all <laughs> Paul Simon. Uh, and, you know, I mean, props to Art Garfunkel for just, you know, attaching himself to the Simon rocket ship, if you will. And, uh, you know, kind of making making himself uh, immortal throughout that. But, yeah, Paul Simon, Paul Simon's the man. I think he just, like, officially retired from, like, public public performing. So everybody's getting old. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was getting old. Yeah, um, what was I going to say? The one of my first uh, records was a Simon and Garfunkel uh, record, and I listened to it. I mean, it's they have. I mean, kind of their, their composition and what they did for me is it's very. Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty unique and really influential to a lot of people. You hear people talk about them. I'm not huge into them, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's time to get back into it. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, and last on the list, um, in 1995, Queen releases Made in Heaven, an album pieced together from recordings made before Freddie Mercury's 1991 death, and it debuted number one in the UK. Um, I wanted to put that on there because, uh, you know, I guess it does happen where, where artists pass away and then you get like their last bit of music gets released a few years later. And um, that's always a special time when you lose somebody and you think the music is done and then all of a sudden something comes back to tapes and like, you know, you see that you've seen that with, um, you know, a few of the bands that we've talked about. Yeah. I think um, about blind melon down garden. Yeah. And after Shannon Hoon died, they put out mm -hmm. the, the Nico yeah. album from, uh, yeah. you know, things that had survived that they were the band blind melon that they were working on prior to Shannon Hoon's death. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting you know, point. And, and I think it's really cool that a lot of that stuff sees the light of day. And obviously you know, I think a lot of us are anticipating the, you know, hopeful, you know, eventual release of, uh, you know, whatever Soundgarden had been working on prior to Chris Cornell's yeah. death. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really, um, I think it's important to the legacy of, of these people that these songs that they're working on and the, their ideas um, that, you know, they're put out there uh, because obviously, you know, when someone passes away, that's it, you know, there's no more new music and obviously a band like Queen and, and an individual like Freddie Mercury, uh, you know, standing the test of time as being, you know, some of the more iconic, uh, you know, artists and bands, certainly, you know, Queen's always going to be one of those bands um, and uh, you know, it's really cool. Uh, I've never actually listened to this one. Uh, I'm going to have to give it a shot. And Queen's something that it's taken me a long time to come around to, and I'm still working on it. Got an open dialogue, you know, with, with, with the Queen world, trying to get into it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, there's some some great performances out there that, you know, Farm Aid, obviously. And, Live Aid, yeah. Whatnot. I mean, you've, you've, you've seen rap, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, right? The I have not, actually. The biopic, oh, wow. right? Yeah, I've not seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a pretty good. Um, I heard it was fantastic. I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what the Queen diehards say about it, but it it was it was a really well done movie. And like, if you know, if you don't know much about Queen, I think it's a pretty good, 
crash course and and whatnot yeah. you know might have to there's some of those that. some of those music docs i don't know did you see the dirt dirt documentary or whatever motley crew of, motley crew yeah i have stuff. not no i've okay. only seen um i haven't even seen elton john's um I saw they did one on Aretha Franklin like a couple of years ago, and uh, I went to see that in theaters with my mother. Actually, she's a really, really big Aretha Franklin fan, and that that one was pretty good. Um, it seems like uh, more and more lately, like those kind of movies are in vogue, and and people are kind of revisiting. I know the Elvis one just happened, and I, I didn't end up making making it out to that one either. Um, but I mean, Ethan, you know well by now. But like my 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 movie periphery is like four movies that I just rewatch over and over and over again. So it it takes a lot for me to sit down and watch a new movie. Yeah, dude, it's such a big commitment. Usually, you get get anxiety scrolling through all the movies. So you just think I got to go back to something that I can, go right back to Good I can Will watch. Hunting. Yeah, but I can watch Good Will Hunting. I get what I need, and I don't need to pay attention as much as a new movie. So yeah, yep, I'm, that's where I'm at comfort movies um one last uh, occurrence that we have on november 6th that we would like to commemorate um is on, on this day in 1948 uh, glenn fry of the eagles was born uh, and glenn passed away in 2016 but obviously uh the eagles are you know another mainstay of, of 70s you know rock you know all over the place um and i mean glenn was obviously a, a very very important part of that band and um i remember I think it was a day or two after Glenn Fry had passed away. Um, Bruce Springsteen was playing a show uh, with the E Street Band in Chicago, uh, and he did a uh, solo acoustic uh, tribute to Glenn Fry, where he sang "Take It Easy," uh, and it was really poignant, as as all tributes from Bruce are. Um, and I remember that was you know something that I used at the time to kind of commemorate Glenn's life and remember him. Um, but you know, another very very in influential individual in music. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the day when. We got the news, you know, mm -hmm. lost Glenn Fry, but um, we still have his music. So always be listening to people, you know, listening to people that we don't have anymore. That's all we have. Exactly. Their music. But we do have a band that we still have, and we got some big news today. They and we are recording yeah, this podcast episode mere hours after the announcement. We all knew it was coming because obviously Creed was not going to reunite solely to do this cruise that they're doing. And then they added a second cruise, actually, if you saw that. Uh, so there's two of them now. But Creed, just mere hours ago, have announced that they're going on a 40-city tour next year, summer 2024. Uh, and they are just, you know leaving no stone unturned in the types of uh, bands that they're bringing out on the road to support them. Uh, so we've got the likes of Three Doors Down, Switchfoot, Daughtry, Tonic, Big Wreck, and Finger Eleven uh, that'll be supporting this tour. And Ethan, I have to say, I, I, am, I fully support and I absolutely love how the public opinion, the court of public opinion has issued a new verdict on Creed over the last year or two. Um, and they are they they're back like they're officially back they're people back. people are fired up about them there's a really really unique and interesting crossover between creed and professional sports in north america right now um the texas rangers are in the world series and they've you know they've used creed as a soundtrack to their unlikely ascension you know into baseball lore right now as they're playing in the world series against the arizona diamondbacks um the minnesota vikings have been hammering creed all year long to less success than the rangers currently but you know they're still right there in the forefront and um just turning their season around now chris yeah they're trying to i mean kirk cousins just went down with an achilles injury but you know if there's anything that's going to bring them back and and help see them through this dark time with their quarterback being out it's going to be creed um and this is just a really good story because obviously um you know, say what you will about, um, you know, the music that they make or the persona that Scott Stapp had, had become uh, anything. It's just really cool to see all of these guys, you know, as far as we can tell, healthy and friendly with one, one another again. And, you know, Scott Stapp had gone through so many personal troubles that when you're a public figure, they play out, you know, in, in the public realm. And, you know, he had been ridiculed for a lot of different things, went through a lot of really, really horrible things, um, you know, in his own personal private life. Um, and it's just really cool to see a band like that and just people make it through something like that and, and come back together um, and revisit, you know, a point in their life uh, that changed their lives, obviously. I mean, they're really talented musicians and they sold a hell of a lot of records. Um, and I think everybody's got an opinion on them, but it's just, it's, it's really cool that they've, you know, kind of made it through to the other side by it seems. And they're giving the people what we want. 
Because I do want this. Yeah, I think that then coming back and playing, I mean, there's definitely some help from the social media age because like, and you've seen it transform where, I mean, it's just, I think they're um, living proof that, you know, no news is bad news. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no matter, no publicity is bad publicity. Like they've been in, they've been in the forefront for so long and, and, and it's honestly just enough time where people change their views and then they're, uh, uh, you know, allowed to go on a tour like this. And I think that, you know, from the videos we've seen, I mean, Scott's still got it. The band's still got it. These guys are ready to rock. And um, and I think people are going to receive it really well. Like, I think that as a, as much as people like to joke about it, like, this is going to be a successful little stint they have in the summer. And the thing is, too, a lot of these venues that they've booked, they're like 6,000, 8,000, sometimes 10,000 capacity venues right here. So, I mean, it's not like they're coming back and they're playing clubs, you know, in 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 kind of uh, satellite cities. I mean, they're hitting all the major cities. They're playing pretty big venues. Like they're playing the same venue that I saw Queens of the Stone Age. Um, they're they're playing the, the big amphitheater in Massachusetts that I've had a few experiences in in my past. Um, and, you know, they're back and I think they're doing it right. It seems like they've taken their time. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that they've been rehearsing together and, and, and you know, kind of um, redeveloping those relationships with one another, even if it's just to the point that they're able to play together again. Um, but, you know, I, obviously everybody's got an opinion on, on the music, but uh, where I struggle with a lot of people is like a lot of people say bad things about the people or like go so far as to actively wish ill to them. Uh, and I'm like, it's not that serious if you don't like the music, but I mean, you gotta be happy for these guys, um, that they're back and you know, that they're able to get through all of the, the shit that was slung, you know, toward them the last 25 years. So, uh, I have to ask Ethan, is this something that you would be interested in attending? Yeah, that was my next question to you. Um, I think the answer answer is obvious. Like, uh, absolutely. I think I'm to that point where I don't want them to come back and play and then be done and me not see them. I think that for a lot of reasons, like, and I'm not even joking. Like I, I want to see these songs played live from them. Like, I don't want to, you know, I'm tired of seeing people, uh, belt out, you know, uh, six feet, you know, arms wide open and higher at the bar. Like I, I want the original. I want to, yeah, come, I need the real I want thing. To come from, I want to, I want it to come from staff himself. Like I want to see it. I want to feel it. And I think that uh, it'll be a great experience, no matter how you, you like. If even if you're going in with like a joking mind, it's still going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's one of those concerts. That, like, I don't know how you can't have fun at one of those shows because people know the lyrics, so mm -hmm. and they're going to play the hits. I mean, that's yeah. that's why they're doing this. So yeah, 100%. yeah, I'm all in. Man. Yeah, and and something like, else that I really appreciate about this latest iteration and this newest chapter with Creed is like the self awareness that they have uh, and their ability to. Uh, kind of own every part of their legacy that's been given to them and, 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 you know, be really good sports about a lot of the jokes and, you know, kind of poke fun at themselves. I mean, like they started a TikTok account and they've done a couple of really funny skits, like with their lyrics and, and, you know, the different guys in the band. And, and I really appreciate that. You know, I think it takes a lot of grace to, you know, own, own that part of it that they didn't ask for, obviously. I mean, nobody, I don't think anybody outside of Weird Al obviously would go out, you know, and, and intend to create music that is going to become a parody of itself. Uh, and, you know, a lot of that, once you put the music out, you know, it kind, kind of get out of hand. But um, at the end of the day, I think it's really cool that they're, you know, able to kind of laugh at themselves a little bit if they can. But at the end of the day, I think all that laughter goes away when they're, when they step onto the stage to headline these shows, um, everybody who's there is, uh, is there for the same reason. You know, there's a lot of people who were, you know, teenagers in the late nineties or maybe in the early twenties and like Creed, Creed was their shit. Um, so it's, it's, it's also, it's awesome. You know, these people are going to be able to have those throwback, you know, those throwback nights where it's, you know, they're going to party like it's 1999 again. So you're in, so you're going, I'm totally in. Yeah. They're playing Mansfield, Massachusetts. I definitely have to go to that. Um, they're playing Bridgeport, Connecticut. I feel like I have to go to that. Um, did you say they're playing in Birmingham too? Yeah. They're playing like 15 minutes at an amphitheater in Pelham. Um, I might have to come down for that. Yeah. Like. Wow, so you got three shows right there. I, <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm ready to commit to this. Yeah, I mean, and you, you've you had a few shows recently where like, um, you know, the bands are getting older and you can go see them. And I think that, you know, nine times out of 10, they're going to kind of uh, 
give you what you need and make it a worthwhile experience. Uh, you know, with mud honey, the Melvins, or, I mean, just honestly, just seeing like the Brighton tour back when it was like, obviously that was really, really solid. Um, but it's, you know, it's not the original, it's not what it was when they were the biggest, but like, it's still going to provide an awesome experience and that's worth it. And I think that Creed, this is going to be exactly that. Like it's going to give you, it's going to give you a great night, a night to remember something that you can look back and be like, yeah, man, like we saw them, like it was the last tour or something, you know, they came back for one final tour and it was like, it was great. So I'm, I'm in too. I think that, I think that, and it's like late enough, there is their final show on the tour, September 28th. Um, might have to commemorate so <laughs> ethan imagine ringing in your 30th birthday <laughs> with oh my. when you say it when you say it like that that is that is ridiculous and and it's in atlantic city which it's kind of perfect that like, feels pretty perfect we could really we can make a weekend out of it like got the uh the my sister-in-law's they have a house and like in ocean city so it's not far so like we could easily we could do something with that i think we should maybe get the whole gang involved yeah <laughs> we might like, have to yeah that, well that's the thing like, i mean creed, like creed is best to enjoy it amongst friends and and i think that's what yeah. this tour is going to be about it's you know it's going to get all your buddies together and go to these shows and um just take it have some you looked at music. the prices by chance i have not looked at the prices you know? yet that's a big question like what like what is this valued at uh and they're playing big know. shows so like yeah like i'm hoping like i mean if i'm being honest like i'm, I'm hoping like 50 bucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i I, I, th I think you'll be able to to hand over a, a crisp ulysses s grant 50 dollar bill and be able to get in and see some creed um i think that's probably yeah. that's probably the going rate like to to get in and, and you know not be on the lawn for example like if you want a seat um so, but honestly though you, you think about this like imagine splurging a little bit and being in the pit for it this is the one show that you splurge yeah. on. I mean, well, it's funny. Like the last show that I splurged to, cause I, I, most of the shows that I go to are just general admission. And then you get up to the front, you know, just through sheer will. Mm -hmm. Um, but the last show that I splurged on pit tickets for was the Queens of the stone age show that I saw in August that I had a transcendental experience at, you know, with, with and Eric was there as well. And I was with a lot of my friends too. So, um, you know, that's obviously just oh. positive reinforcement that I need, I need to do this again. Like if you're going to do Creed, like, I feel like you got to do it right. And this is something you, it's worth going to the piggy bank for. Yep. It's, it's either we splurge on that or we get tickets to go to the, uh, the, go under the ship and see them for the, well, that's all sold out. Cruise. So I imagine the resale is going to be pretty expensive, but Ethan, we need to find a way to get yeah. on that boat. We need to be on that boat. Exactly. We need, we need, <laughs> we need to be on that boat. And then, like, you know, you got Three Doors Down, Daughtry, which Daughtry follows the page we, we were talking about earlier. Chris Daughtry does um, follow Grunge cool. Bible. Yeah. I mean, I think those those bands would be a lot of fun, too, because... Even Switchfoot and Figure Eleven. I mean, these are a lot of bands that I haven't thought about in a little while, right? I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. But that's kind of what it's about, though. It's just kind of a throwback to the older days. Mm -hmm. And there yeah, was a time, I mean, like, we we're just old enough that when we were young that was still the point in which Creed was cool. Like my friends and I, like we listened to Creed in like 2005 and 2006, like it was cool. Um, and, and I remember back when I used AOL instant messenger, um, you could you customize the sounds that you would use, like when you came online or when you got a message and I made it so that my sound, when I came online, it was the opening riff to, uh, to hide by Creed from the weathered album. So, I mean, and I, there was no, there were no jokes wow. about it then. I was like, I just need to announce my presence with the sickest. Yeah. Yeah the sickest riff that I can get, you know, from the hands of Mark Tremonti. And that's what I did. That's awesome. Everybody knows Chris is online when you hear that's the thing. You have like to make Creed. an entrance, you know, and, and, and there was yeah. no better band for me to make an entrance with, uh, than with Creed. And that's the other thing too, like say what you will. I think all of the negativity that people have towards Creed is, uh, you know, something about Scott and his and his voice rubs people the wrong way and they're like oh it's a caricature of Eddie Vedder or whatever which I I don't think is true at all but these guys as musicians are fantastic I mean the songs that they wrote even if you take the lyrics out of it like Mark Tremonti is an incredible fucking guitarist yeah yeah I'm glad you said it because it needs to be said these yeah. guys these guys I mean the music you know it's catchy it's got it's it's heavy at times and uh and then, it's heavier yeah, than a lot of people give it credit for it is yeah. And, and that probably was time and place. People didn't like, 
wasn't heavier as the stuff that they were listening to coming off the heels of of grunge and punk and all that stuff but like yeah you know i mean it, it some, some of their the songs style, like the are hard, you ready the hard rock Bullets? The like these are these are heavy heavy songs and uh, i think we all yeah. need we all need we got to stay heavy from time to time and uh i think creed creed's able to do that but i'll tell you we've been pretty consistent since the beginning of this page you know almost eight years ago we've always uh carried the water for creed and uh, i think this is our reward for it now is we're going to be able to see them live yeah yeah yeah, I think it's a done deal. We're definitely going to be at at some of the shows. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think we just have to. It's one of those things that like sometimes like you know, you know when Pearl Jam announces a tour, like obviously like we have to go. We're obligated. I, right. I kind of feel obligated to be yes. at this in be in the realm of Creed. Creed I agree. And and it's summer. funny because Ethan, we always talk like, about we throw around the idea of like, oh, we need to have a grunge Bible meetup at a show. And like the most logical point would be like a Pearl Jam show in a big city. Let's just tell people we're going to be there. And like, let's all get together at a bar and hang out and share stories and whatnot. We might be able to do that for Creed. We might be able to do that for them. Yeah. And um, yeah, if you're listening out there, you're, you're probably in one of two camps, you know, heck no or heck yes. And uh, so but maybe maybe we can push everybody, push the needle a little bit for everybody, and yeah, maybe we just set something up and and let's just do it. The nice maybe thing, a grunge Bible reunion. Yeah, the nice thing is we've got a good bit of time between now and the start of the tour. It's a lot of time to win over some hearts and minds and, and get people to creed. Because I, like I, I promise you, if you go, you're not going to have a bad night. You're just not. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. We can make that. We can make that uh, claim right now. Like, what are you going to do? Like, say you go to Creed and like, it's not the best night in the world. Like it, it definitely beats like sitting on the couch at home on your phone, uh, watching TikToks, yeah. you know? So you might as well go see the real thing. That's what I've been thinking about a lot. Like a, a night of live music is, is going to be at least interesting. Like you'll be able to come away with like, yeah, that was, I don't think had, I've ever, had... I don't think I've ever regretted going to any show that I've gone to. Um, and Pretty I've much. never, yeah, I mean, this... I've never regretted it. And I've never, the shows that I've spent a, a respectable amount of money to go to. I've never thought at the end of it, like, wow, I wish I hadn't spent as much money. Um, and I'm lucky enough that I'm in a position to be able to do that, obviously. Um, but I think this is one of those instances, you know, you just got to have an open mind. And we talk about that a lot as it relates to, you know, giving different artists a shot. But I think it just as it applies just as much to artists that you may have written off in the past, you know, kind of revisit with, with arms wide open, with a mind wide open. Yeah. So we just need to figure out which is the best day, uh, yeah. what's the best date, best city. And like, obviously like, I mean, if I go to, I mean, we have to go together, Chris, like, I really don't, I really don't want to do this solo. You know, no, that's not no, option. I'm not going to a Creed show alone. Like I'm, I'm going with the yeah, boys and like, I'm talking option. like, like we, I've probably At got least a, four or five people. Oh yeah. I've got a new England roster of probably like, I might push it to like seven or eight people that I'm sure would be interested. So, I mean, what yeah. better of a night could that be? You just get like, you just get like 10 people together and you just march right into Creed, into the pit, especially, and just take it in. I mean, this is, yeah. And this is a perfect example of a show that can galvanize a group of people. And like, mm-hmm. if a couple of people are doing it, like the next few are going to be easy sells because, yeah, it, you know, it has that like, the more the merrier. Yeah. And it just has that allure to them where it's like, you don't want to, I don't think people, want to miss out on this no there's going to be a lot of fomo about the creed tour and the other thing too this is a really good opportunity we've all got friends that like music but they're not concert people right like they don't really go to shows like i have a few friends like that and this is the perfect opportunity you take them to a creed show they have a great time and then they're hooked on live music and then they start getting out and seeing shows i mean that's a really really great gift you can help somebody find um is the appreciation and the desire to go see live shows because i mean i you gave that to me in a big way as I've, I've spoken about to you, you know, on and off the podcast, like, you know, we started, you know, uh, obviously doing grunge Bible. And I was like, I need to see some of these bands. And now like I, I go to like 20, 30 shows a year because of that. Um, and I love it yeah. and I want to go to more and more and more. So uh, that, that's a really, I think Creed has just the right ingredients to get somebody into that state of mind. Yeah. I mean, I think going to shows is, is a worthy hobby. I mean, it's, it is really it's support you're getting a lot out of it usually and um it's something to be invested in and and to go and like to be your thing and i th- think that it's very admirable and um i think that's another episode an episode for another time to talk about oh yeah super fanning and being being there for when it happened mm-hmm. and um 
yeah, this is good. I'm already kind of thinking about, you know, who, who could show up where. Oh, yeah. Because uh, a lot of, there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that are thinking the same thing right now. Exactly. What songs What songs do you think you're most excited for? Oh, I mean, gosh. it's it's pretty, It's I would say it's not hard to pick. There's plenty of, I mean, everything's going to be great. And there's a ton of like, you know, obviously all the classics are going to be great. Is there anything that really... Uh, really I mean, obviously, about. obviously, all of the classics. I did mention Hyde. I really want to hear that one. Um, I would love to hear "What's This Life For" uh, from the Human Clay <laughs> album. But I've also, I've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good soft spot for their 2009 Full Circle album. Uh, in mm-hmm. particular, uh, there's two songs on there that I would love to hear: uh, "Rain" and "Away in Silence." Uh, I would absolutely mm-hmm. lose it if if I heard either of those songs. Uh, you know, from from the men themselves. And obviously, I yeah, mean, my, my own prison too. I, all of them, Ethan, just all of them. I want to hear them all. <laughs> yeah, you and Drew, huh, you and Drew put me on to uh, Away in Silence. Uh, one of the <laughs> yeah, we have. did. And uh, that was, that was so, it, it, it is such, I mean, it is really like Creed and it's in a vulnerable stage and mm-hmm. something that like needs to be heard in person. So I would love to hear that as well. Well, that's what well. it is. It's, it's full circle. If, if Drew, yeah. Drew needs Drew needs to be a part of this. Yeah. I mean, the, the opening, the opening verse, you walked away in silence. You walked away to breathe, stopped and turned around to say goodbye to me. I'm pleading as you're leaving. I'm begging you to stay. I'm not the man I used to be. I've changed. Um, that's, that's poignant. It's golden. That is golden. Oh, yeah. So it's we're going to, we're going to have to get that all, all night. Yeah, we're gonna need that. So that's the uh, that's the um, that's the notice. I want everybody to check your calendars, uh, block out some time, check the uh, check the um, uh, the announcement. You know, with all of the dates, and uh, let's let's get out to some Creed shows, everybody. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good summer. I think I, I think I'd like to preemptively declare twenty twenty four as Creed summer. Yeah, dude. I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. Absolutely. I think ticket ticket sales go on um probably go live Soon. uh this weekend, probably this probably, week. Yeah. Th- I said yeah, Thursday or Friday. So yeah. which we we'll be together, to so maybe we'll have to pull the trigger on some Creed tickets. Oh man, that that's the that is the best chance of me doing it this week if I have uh, some peer pressure to to oh, do yeah. it with you. So that'll be good. Yeah, we'll get it done. So, that'll be really that's, good. That's everybody's homework out there to also get it done. So I'm glad that we were able to discuss that. Once again, we were prepping for this show earlier today and, you know, we had a couple of directions that we could have taken this episode in and then boom, Creed announces their tour. So we knew what we had to do with this week's episode. Um, So if you're still here, thank you. Uh, We hope that uh, maybe we broke the news to you uh, and maybe we've convinced you already to go and see one of these shows. But if not, we've still got some more time to, to convince you. Um, but once again, we'd yeah. like to thank everybody for their support. Uh, anything that you do to support the show, share the show with friends or, or directly support us with your dollars, uh, goes a long way. So we really appreciate that. Um, Ethan, is there anything mm-hmm. else that you have before we get to songs of the week? No, I think we've talked about a lot. I've talked about everything we can about Creed. So, um, yeah, the hay is in the barn there. I think it's songs of the week time. Fuck Yeah. And I can go first for that if you'd like. Yeah, do it. Why not? Um, so this song came on, um, came on my Spotify the other day, and it's a band that I love. Seen a couple times. Uh, the song is "Come With Me Now" by Camp off of their Lavender Days album. Nice. And uh, yeah, man's got a man's got a beautiful voice and has a nice, a really nice build to it. It's kind of repeating "Come With Me Now" and kind of builds throughout the song and it's very delicate and uh just a a really solid listen especially for uh the beginning of fall and uh the change of the weather so nice got that warm voice that you want to hear you know so yeah really really solid excellent yeah so for my song of the week if you'll allow me i just kind of need to set the stage for things right so i'm going to ask everybody if they can kind of take my words and try to put themselves into the shoes of what i'm about to discuss so picture this it's probably i would say maybe april 2008 and you log on to your desktop computer because your mom's finally gotten off of aol uh, answering emails to different family members and checking up on the latest headlines. Um, so you finally, you log on to the computer and today's the day that you've worked up the courage to instant message the girl that you have a crush on that the dances this weekend and like you, you want to have a dance with her. So you're, you're logging on to propose that. 
So what better way to announce yeah. your presence to your crush and the world, as far as you're concerned, the entire world, by logging on. And when you log on, Creed plays. And not just Creed, but Hide by Creed from the 2001 Weathered album. That's going to be my song of the week. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned like 20 minutes ago, that's that's how you have to announce your presence sometime. Uh, I did that. That is a true uh, that is a true story. Uh, it's all nonfiction here on the Grunge Bible podcast. That did happen, and I did dance with her. Nothing came of it, obviously, yeah, it, but I did worked. dance with her. Damn it! <laughs> it worked. It did That's work. That's incredible. And I, I like to think I too just, that if I hadn't used uh, "Hide by Creed," I don't think she would have danced with me. Yeah, you're you're probably right. <laughs> I'm probably That's right. All the incentive she needed. Exactly. I think you're just you just really caught up on that album artwork, huh? <laughs> I am so caught up on the album artwork. It is. It has it no is business just, going so hard, right? It's just a ridiculous, ridiculous album cover. So if you're not familiar with the weathered uh, album artwork from Creed's <laughs> third album, um, it is a, it's a tree in some sort of like mythical, like Hobbit land world. It looks like, and actively being carved into the tree is um, th only three of the band members and there's there's four men in creed so i don't i don't know where the fourth one is but scott's at the bottom and uh, fuck i don't know who <laughs> I, I know one of them's tremonti i don't know who the other individual is but <laughs> being carved into the tree or the likeness of 75 percent of the band creed on this tree um and it's just it's beautiful it kind of makes me choke up a little bit you know if i really sit there and analyze what's going on in this photograph <laughs> it is un uncanny weathered such a good such a good title i mean they, they kind of hit on all of it <laughs> as chris shows me the scott staff's face at the bottom that's perfect i mean maybe you know it's just not they're just not done tattooing the tree i think that's the, the thing yeah maybe coming. somebody was a little shy and they didn't want to be on there so but also the tree didn't have room for a fourth person so i understand that yeah. it happens but that's yeah, just, that's going to be perfect. my song of the week is a uh, hide by creed that's great that's yeah. so good um, so good. Yeah, thank you all for listening and uh, getting you a little Creed fix. Um, hopefully, you enjoy the podcast. Like I said, there's plenty of great episodes to go back and and listen to. So uh, maybe pick one at random, check it out, see how we did, and uh, and we'll keep coming uh, with hits next yeah. week, same time, same place. Absolutely. The nice thing now is we've been doing this long enough that if there's a grunge related topic that you're interested in. I feel pretty confident in saying that we have an episode about it at this point. So, um, you know, you can go back and, and take a listen and hopefully enjoy it and share it with some people. But thank you, as always, as Ethan said, for your time this week. And uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, but Ethan, next up for us, we got a little little, little live music together, a little, little meet up, some fellowship, and we get to see one of our good buddies from college get married. So this is going to be a good week for us. And I hope it is a similarly good week for all of you. Yeah. Yep, a lot of good things happening. So again, stay safe out there. Go to go to shows and listen to your favorite music. Um and yeah, you know, give value give value to the music in your life. It'll it'll give it back. It always does. Absolutely. There's no reason to hide. <laughs> and with that closes episode 137. Thank you all. Have a great week. Stay heavy. <laughs> <laughs>